Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, John Davis, and this is Theology Today One-on-One. -on -one. I'm glad that you decided to tune in with us today on this channel. Uh, and I hope that if you like today's content, that you will hit the like button. You'll think about subscribing to the channel and you'll also hit that bell notification. Uh, that way you're notified as I post new videos. And so we're going to jump right into today's topic. We've been dealing with pitfalls to uh, uh, Christian growth, pitfalls to Christian growth. And so we've been coming from the text of Second Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul is dealing with uh, these false teachers that were corrupting the Corinthian church. And so this week we've been zeroing in on these false views of Christ. And so I'm going to go ahead and read the text to get us started. It says in verse three, uh, chapter 11, verse three, but I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve through his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit than the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, <clears throat> excuse me, you put up with it readily enough. And so we've been using this as a springboard to talk about how when we hear these different views of Christ, this different view and uh, of the spirit, the different gospel, it leads us away from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. And so the key to this whole verses, uh, verses are in verse four. And when he says this, that for if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, that's the key. The moment you proclaim another Jesus, you're going to introduce a different spirit. You're going to, to introduce a different gospel. The moment you start proclaiming another Jesus that is different from the biblical Jesus, it's going to produce a different spirit. It's going to produce a different gospel. It's not going to be the spirit of truth. It's not going to be the Holy Spirit. Most likely it'll be the spirit of the world. Worse, it'll be the spirit of Antichrist that'll be produced. And then you're going to, if you preach a different Jesus, you're going to produce a different gospel. It won't be the good news of scripture. It'll be the bad news of man's ingenuity, man's wisdom, man's uh, 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 desires. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And so what we talked about is all these different views and aberrant views about the person of Christ. And so today I want to deal with this one, which is a very, very uh, uh, popular attack on Christ, which is Jesus was not God. He was divine, but he was not God. And a lot of Christian cults follow along on this same view, whether it be Mormonism, whether it be Jehovah's Witness, they all have this aberrant view of Christ where they're not saying that he's not divine, but they are definitely saying that he's not God. He's not God. Either he's a God, he's similar to God, or uh, in some views, you know, he's nothing but the archangel Michael. Michael and Jesus are the same under Mormonism. He's the spirit brother of Lucifer. All these different aberrant views of Christ produce another Christ. And so I want to talk about this one on today. And so when you think about this, the reason why there are kind of five main arguments on why people have a struggle dealing with Jesus being God. And the first one is that uh, it's illogical to a lot of people. In other words, you can't have God being man and God. In other words, either God is God or God is man, but he can't be God and man at the same time. And so to a lot of people, it's just illogical to think that God can become a man or it's either illogical to think that man can become God. And I, I will agree because if you're just going to take it from that standpoint, then it is illogical. But the thing that we have to understand is that God is not like us. God is, is not of the same essence as us. He's not as the same divine nature as us. And so we have to understand that. And then the second one is this, that the first century disciples, they deified Jesus into God. In other words, it was the first century disciples, they made Jesus into a God. And this flows from the idea that Jesus never said that he was God. He never taught that he was God. He never even implied that he was God, but that Jesus' message was not about himself, his message was about the kingdom. And because of the profound effect that Christ had on the disciples, they then turned him into a God. And so that's a wrong view because we know that the disciples didn't turn him into a God. Jesus declared himself to be God. And that's important. 
The third uh, understanding is this, is that the church deified Jesus uh, into a God in the fourth and, and fifth century, you know, at the uh, Council of Nicaea. And so the understanding is that under the Emperor Constantine, that the church is the one that made Christ into a God. They also added the New Testament to the Old Testament. And that's where we get our Christian faith. But we know that's not true because we can find the teachings way before the Council of Nicaea that Jesus was God. And the fourth one is this, that, that Jesus was one of many emanations that came out from God. In other words, this is that form of docetism that said that Jesus wasn't really real. He was an emanation that comes that came out from God. And the new age jumped on this in the late 90s and 2000s, where it was said that Jesus was just one of many avatars to come and help man evolve into a higher state of Godhood. And that's not true because it's not Jesus is an emanation. And, and, and so we're going to deal with that a little bit today. Also, the fifth one is why it's hard for people to accept is that they tend to spiritualize or allegorize the deity of Christ. In other words, that when it says that Jesus was God in the flesh, it just means that Jesus ascended to a higher level of living. In other words, to say that he's God is not saying that he's God. It's saying that he ascended uh, past the level of, of just living as a pure man and he reached this divine status. But we don't want to believe that because listen to what John says in John 20 verses 30 through 31. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which were not written in this book, but these are written, but these are written. So what is written in the gospel of John was written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The entire gospel of John was written so that you would believe that Jesus is who the scriptures declare that he is. And in believing that what the scriptures say about him, you will have life in his name. In other words, faith is not just believing in Jesus. It is to believe in the Jesus of scripture. I want to say that one more time. Faith is not just believing in Jesus, but it is to believe in the Jesus of scripture because it is the Jesus of scripture that powers the message of the gospel. It is the Jesus of scripture that saves. It is the Jesus of scripture that will judge all of creation. If you believe in any other Jesus other than the Jesus that is clearly defined and outlined and described and revealed in divine scripture, then you cannot have salvation because there is salvation in no other name than Jesus Christ. And that is the biblical Jesus. So if we get Jesus wrong, we miss out on eternity. If we get Jesus wrong, we have no salvation. If we get Jesus wrong, we have no savior. All we have is a product of our own imaginations. And what we have is a false deity, a false religion, and false hope. And so we don't want to do that. So we got to get it right about Christ. Well, in John chapter one, verses one through two, listen to what John says, how he opens his book, because John is different from the other three synoptic gospels. John doesn't necessarily write about the earthly life of Christ. He does, but he comes at it from a divine perspective. Because remember, the whole purpose of John's book is so that you will believe that Jesus is the son of God, that you would believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. That is the purpose of John's book. That is the purpose of John's gospel is that we can, we would believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. And so John doesn't talk about the birth of Christ. He doesn't talk about any of the different uh, things of what the other uh, gospels talk about. Why? He only deals with Christ from a divine perspective. And so look at how he opens his book. He doesn't open his book with the manger. He doesn't open his book with the declaration that Mary's going to have a child like Luke does like like uh, like uh, uh, Matthew does or Mark. Here's how John begins it. He begins his book with the aseity of Christ, the self-existent one, that Jesus self-existed before the beginning. And he opens the book by saying, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. In the Greek, the phrase, the word was God is actually written in the Greek like this. God was the word. In other words, the Greek puts the emphasis on the word being God. 
It's not just a statement that it's making. It wants to put the emphasis that the word was actually God. The word was not a piece of God. It wasn't an expression of God. It wasn't another God. It was God. The word was God. Furthermore, the verb was in the Greek means to exist. And if you understand the Greek language, it's in the imperfect tense, which means that the word always and continually existed as God. The word didn't one day become God. It always and continually existed as God in the past, all the way through the present, into the future. The word was always and will be continually God. And then John says this in verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. The same word who was always and continually existing as God now becomes flesh and dwells among first century Israel. You see, it's the same word that now becomes flesh and God becoming flesh. How did it happen? God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And I'll do a teaching on this to give you that understanding that God, the title God is simply a title of the Godhead describing God's nature, his essence, his substance. In other words, when we say God, we're talking about the nature of God, his omnipotence, his, um, his omnipresence, his omniscient. You're talking about his essence, that he's co-eternal that he that means that he's eternal he's self-existing his substance that's what we talk about when we use the title god well when we use the terms father son and holy spirit these are names describing the three distinct persons of the godhead in other words god is the title but father is the personhood of god and 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 we have to understand that that's why we say that there's one god uh, choosing to reveal himself in three distinct persons, Father, Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So we know the deity of Christ can be supported throughout the New Testament. We know this, but the most compelling argument for the deity of Christ is Jesus' own words. And I want to look at these really quick. In John chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, listen to this. And these are conversations that Jesus is having with the Jews. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them and said, my father is working unto now and I am working. Th Verse 18. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father making himself equal with God. So notice that Jesus was calling God his father. When the Jews heard that, they were not hearing, oh, God has a son. God God, God, and Miss God got together and created a baby. No, they, they, they didn't hear that. When they hear Jesus saying that God is his father, they understand that as Jesus equaling himself with God, saying that he's God. And Jesus does not correct their view. Jesus continually called God his father because him and the father are one. And notice that the Jews wanted to kill him. Why? Because to the Jews, that was blasphemy. Jesus was saying that he was God. So here, clearly, even though you may say Jesus never taught that he was God, but clearly these Jews who understood the context of what Jesus was saying, they heard him clearly saying that he was God. They heard it. Listen to John chapter eight, verses 53 through 59. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. If my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God, but you have not known him, I know him. And if I were to say I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day and he saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was I am. Watch the response of the Jews. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Notice that Jesus uses the, the phrase, 
I am the same thing that God told Moses in Exodus chapter three. Jesus says that I am. The Jews understood it. Why did they pick up stones to kill him? Because once again, they heard blasphemy. They heard Jesus not only saying that he was equal to God. Now they hear him saying very clearly, I am. I am the Tetragrammaton. I am. I am God. The Jews understood it. We got to understand it. Listen to this. John chapter 10. Listen to this conversation here. Jesus answered them and says, I told you and you do not believe me. The works that I do in my father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not, not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will not perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. Wow. G the Jews then picked up stones to stone him. Listen to this. Jesus answered them and said, I have shown you many good works from the father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him. It's not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. Wow. So when Jesus says, I am, I and the father are one. Here's exactly what the Jews heard that Jesus is equating himself to God. Very, very important there when you understand that, that Jesus and the Father are of one essence, of one substance. The Jews heard it. They understood that Jesus was clearly saying he was God. And here's the last one. Matthew 26, verses 63 and 60 through 66. This is the trial of Christ. But Jesus remained silent and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell me if you are Christ, the son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. This, that statement is straight from Daniel chapter seven, verses 13 through 14. Then listen to what the high priest did. The high priest tore his robes and says, he has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, he deserved death. When the Caiaphas, the high priest heard Jesus say that he was the son of man coming on the clouds. He knew that Jesus was saying that he was God. Not only was he the Messiah, but he was God. So guys, to believe that Jesus never took upon himself the claims of deity is nothing more than another Jesus. To say that Jesus is not God is another Jesus and is not the God of scripture. Clearly Jesus taught and Jesus said that he was God. And if you don't believe he said that, just look at the Jews response to what he said. And so I wanna conclude with that guys, because you cannot separate the person of Christ from the work of Christ. So, we're going to deal with another view of this. So I hope that this blessed you on today. If so, please hit the like button. Also think about subscribing to the channel. And so I hope you can join with us this week because we're going to detail another view of another Jesus. That way we can make sure that you don't fall into these pitfalls of Christian maturity. So until then, continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.